Hello and welcome to another episode of my C++ programming tutorial series. My name is Eric and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to use the for loop to display all of the elements stored inside of an array without knowing how much elements are inside of an array. Okay, so in the last tutorial, I taught you how to use for loops in C++, but we really didn't get into it that much in terms of useful applications. So in today's tutorial, we're going to do just that, but with a simple example. Now, if you recall from my past tutorials on C++ arrays, I stated that every time if you want to print out a value stored in an array, you would have to reference its index value. And if the array contained a lot of numbers inside it, it would be inconvenient to see out every single one of them because you would have to type in, let's say if the array had a thousand elements, you would have to type a thousand lines of code. But as we've recently learned in the past three to four videos about loops, we could make anything that is repetitious into something that is very easy to do. So in our tutorial for today, we're going to do just that, except we're gonna do it with a small array just so it's easy to keep track of as well as to double check our work. Okay, so first off, let's create an array of test scores. And then we could store test scores, let's say 23, 56, 100, 89, and let's say 45 and then semicolon. Note that I did not put a number inside the square brackets. That is okay to do. So in this case, you could also put a five to represent there's five elements or you could leave it blank. That's completely up to you. Now, the next thing we want to do is create a variable that will store the number of elements inside of our array. So in number of elements. Now, remember I said that we're going to treat this as if this was a super long array and we don't know how many elements are inside of it, but we're going to keep it five elements long just to keep it simple. So we could double check our work if you don't believe me that is. So the number of elements will help us keep track of the number of elements inside the array. Okay. Now we're going to make the program figure out how many elements are inside the array without us having to know how many elements are inside of the array. And in order to do that, we would have to use the size of function. So first off type in size of, and then parentheses inside the size of you would give it the array. So in this case, it's test scores. And then you divide it by the size of one of the elements inside the array and you could just take the first element test scores zero okay so what's happening here is basically the size of function is getting the test scores this size in terms of memory so like bytes kilobytes megabytes that type of size and then it would divide that total size of the array by the size of one of the elements inside the array. And because this array is a integer type, that means each of the elements inside have the same size of an integer. So that's basically divided by the integer size of one of the elements. Now to clarify it a bit more, let's pretend this long rectangular box, which has little boxes in itself is the entire test scores array. And then let's say we're told that one box is one inch in space basically or something like that okay so right now we don't know what's the size for an integer okay so let's pretend this number doesn't exist but it does we're just gonna have the computer figure it out for us and then we also have to figure out how big is the entire array okay we just don't know how many boxes are inside the array so these are the boxes here now what the size of function is is it basically takes we're gonna feed it this entire array okay and then the size of function will tell us oh, this total array is let's say 10 inches long okay that's the size of the entire box that size of told us that this entire array is 10 inches long and then what happened here is that size of and then the array okay just to make it easier and then what we do next is we divide it by the size of one of the boxes inside the array so let's say the size of function for this part tells us that one of the boxes here is one inches and if we do the math which is 10 inches from this part divided by this part which we found out was one inch we get 10 as a result which means that there are 10 elements or 10 items inside this entire 10 inch array and that's basically what's happening here in our program the number of elements inside the test scores is the total size of the test score array divided by the size of one of them 
and that should give us five if we were to see out this program. You know what? Let's see out the number of elements, in case you don't believe me. <laughs> so let's quickly compile this. Okay, as you can see, there's a five right here. I just didn't put the end line to to make that. So there you go. As you can see, there's five. Now let's create our for loop. So as we learned in the last tutorial, the for loop takes in three parameters. The first one is our counter variable. The second one is the condition that it will check. And then the third one is the incrementer, which will update the value continuously for each cycle the for loop runs through. So the second one, in this case, we would want the for loop to keep running until it reaches the last element. So i is less than number of elements. Okay, And then in each cycle, we want to print out the number stored in the array. So test scores, and then i. And then let's do n line just to make it easier to read. So what it's doing right here is that first it runs the for loop and initializes our counter variable called i to zero. Why zero? Because when we count stuff in computers, we start off with a zero, not a one, as I explained in the array tutorial. So zero, and then it'll check, okay, is zero less than the number of elements? And we know the number of elements is going to be five because of this equation. So is zero less than five? Yes, run this line. So it prints out test scores at index of zero. And that's 23, so it'll show 23 and line, so it makes a new line. And now it increases i by one, so next time it goes through the loop, it shows, okay, is one less than the number of elements, which is five? So is one less than five? Yes. So print it out, and then once it reaches i is five, is five less than five? No, because five is equal to five. So it skips this line and comes out of the for loop and ends the program right here. Okay, so if we were to run this program, we should see all the numbers printed. And as you can see, we do. And it prints it in order too. So it's 23, 56, 100, 89, and 45. Just five numbers, exactly as we expected it to be. Now, if I were to extend this array even more, okay? So no, I'm just gonna add more numbers to the test scores array. So let's say 100, 55, 12, 23, nine and then we rerun the program it'll show the extra numbers that i've added see so it's 23 56 189 45 and then the new numbers 155 12 23 and 9 and as you can see our program works now some people who are more experienced with programming would probably point out that this method of getting the number of elements is not good because you are prone to something called type error so the solution to do that is by using something called a template in C++. But that is something a little bit more advanced. Well, the concept of templates, that is. So I won't be covering that in today's tutorial, but in a future tutorial later on. And that basically concludes our tutorial for today on displaying the number of elements as well as all of the elements inside of an array using loops. Now, before I end this off, I would just like to point out that yes, you can use a while loop to do this. All you have to do is change this to while, delete the first and last parameter, and then create, actually I'll do it for you right now. So this is what you do. While, let's see, let's do int i equal to zero, and then i is less than number of elements, and then inside the curly brackets, we would see out the test scores. Okay. And then if we compile the program. Oh, okay. My bad. I forgot to increment it. So I plus plus. There. Start without debugging. Okay, as you can see, it gives us the same result as if we were to do it with a for loop. Because what we did here, as I explained before, is we're basically recreating the for loop except through the use of a while loop. Now, thank you for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and be sure to leave a comment below if you are confused about anything at all. And if you love these tutorials, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.